Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel that brings you in-depth hi-fi reviews and advice from the consultant himself. Today, by popular demand, I'm reviewing the bigger brother to the previously reviewed Linkdorf TDI 1120 streaming amplifier, this little cutie, uh, which uh, at the price point received much praise for its extreme setup flexibility and high-end room correction system, allowing for more correct sound in typical homes and refined subwoofer integration. This video is building upon what you can learn in that review of the 1120. So I suggest that if you are new to Linkdorf amplifiers, that you check out my 1120 review first. And if you also want to in understand the possibilities it has a, in greater depth, then also check out the full setup deep dive video. Please find links in the description uh, and or check them out from the channel front page. As always, gently tap, 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 subscribe and keep those comments coming. In my professional life, I assist AV companies with product development and beta testing, as well as helping individuals to achieve the high-end sound of their dreams. You can always reach me by mail in the channel description. First, let's dive into the differences between the little 1120 and the 3400 and compare the sound of the two. Even though the 1120 and the 3400 are very similar in their features, there's loads of differences. Besides the obvious differences in power from the all digital amplifier boasting 200 watts versus 60 watts rated at 8 ohms, it has a different construction and is the only Linkdorf amplifier that offers a built-in headphone output. The 3400 brings the very satisfying signature heavy ball-bearing volume control as well. Two additional 500 euro module options consist of a HDMI module and a high-quality analog input module that also features a MM phono stage. Also with a high-end AKM chip for the analog to digital conversion. It's a good idea to get the modules with the amp as the HDMI module needs factory fitting and both modules cost more when not purchased with the amp. The module-based approach might also give new possibilities in the future for upgrades, especially with HDMI standards. The world is moving fast, so who knows? The 3400 also adds four high-end analog devices stacks in parallel on the output, suggesting higher grade sound. 3400 is adding balanced analog outputs for subwoofers or extra amplifiers. Furthermore, on the output side, we find a digital coax output that can be used for everything ranging from headphone amplifiers, power amps, recording output, subwoofers, you name it. The output can be uh, variable or fixed. The 3400 regulates volume by adjusting the current to the output stage, even being a digital amplifier. In comparison, this is uh, done in the 1120 entirely in DSP, which means that the 3400 is always running at full digital resolution as the internal bit resolution is never reduced or compromised for actual volume control to the output. Don't put too much into this as the internal resolution is 40 or 48 bits, leaving tons of headroom for operating at even the lowest level possible, far away from any audible degradation. We also get a extra front-facing USB connection and the 3400 includes a Bluetooth uh, and infrared remote that is uh, very satisfying and delicious to hold. The remote is optional for the 1120 and costs 100 euros. The 3400 also brings full support for Tidal Connect and has a built-in MQA core decoder. That's a big deal for any Tidal user who would like to keep the Tidal world in the Tidal app and currently the only way to stream at fully fat quality directly from Tidal's own app is Tidal Connect. 
3400 also has a real audio USB input and both the USB and HDMI inputs supports DSD up to 5.6 megahertz. The USB port on the 1120 is for file-based playback only and saving restoring configurations. The 3400 has a built-in SD card storing and recalling configurations. And finally, almost everything can be configured directly from the built-in dynamic display using the remote control without any need to actually enter the web interface of the device. This is something not possible to this degree with any other of the linked off audio amplifiers. The display is also very easy to read, even from a distance. With all these differences, it's clear that the 3400 is much more than just a more powerful 1120. It is simply a different beast, a class or two above and with better converters. With the 3400, we can connect high-end sources via the upgraded analog inputs as well as digitally via USB and even AES-EBU, the balanced professional digital standard for signals found in many higher-end DACs and streamers. The balanced analog output and the digital coax output can be totally independent of each other and can be used in extremely flexible ways from driving an external amplifier or with or without filters and separate voicings, also known as advanced tone control applied. Hmm, this is real value if you like to experiment with your setup and change it over time. You could even use it as a external room correction and voicing processor inserted with analog or digital IOs. The 3400 will happily accommodate your most ambitious ideas in this regard. No matter what, the 3500 is the most flexible integrated stereo amplifier I have ever tested. And it is all really easy to access and work with via either the hand remote or the web interface. You can really feel that this is a product of focused evolution. The headphone output can be used traditionally with the amp muting when inserting the headphones or separately with an independent volume control. The default setting is independent mode, but it can be changed in the setup. With a small unbalanced jack socket, it's not suitable for most audiophile headphones and is more for convenience. Thankfully, you still have the great analog or digital outs where a fat headphone amp can be connected. Let's talk a bit about the usually excellent and pretty musical Room Perfect system that tries to compensate for negative effects that can be caused by the room while still preserving the unique sound of your speakers by measuring the room power response. While it is always much better to change your room instead of digitally trying to correct your room, most people can have a lot of practical issues in changing the room, myself included. The most common problem with most room correction systems is that they try to force a certain target curve onto your ears, often resulting in sharp filtering that actually sounds crap, but will look good on the curve. In contrast with many other room correction systems, Room Perfect works by acquiring information both of local properties at the listening position and uh, on the acoustic power in the room. This enables a fully automatic calculation of the target curve. It is not possible to edit the results, but overall frequency response can be changed with the very comprehensive voicing EQ filters that can be selected dynamically from a list or even applied to input presets. I love this applying voices to preset feature that allows for very sophisticated and simplified daily use that delivers what you want it to, like removing sub bass rumble or on the poorly uh, engineered talk radio or brighten up that old turntable or even making a setting just for one specific record. I tested Room Perfect with a pair of the new uh, Scansonic HD MB5B floor standing speakers sitting right here. And in this case, the Room Perfect calibration pulled the speaker from a very full, almost a bit muddy mid-bass presentation 
to a more balanced and neutral one that was actually matching my SBR1 speakers much better in the overall frequency balance. Thus, it sounded more correct to my ears. The mid-range went from being a bit edgy to a much more refined and delicious presentation. On the other hand, when I made a calibration for the SBR once, I was not that pleased with the result first time that presented a very bloated bass response. As it's not possible to edit measurements to see what may have caused a clearly bad uh, measurement, I had to do the calibration process one more time, this time with a result much closer to previous experiences with the system. In daily use, the 3400 is offering the same wonderful power in a preset that the 1120 does. Inputs can be named, internet radio stations can be made into presets, again each with their own gain and voicing applied if you want to. Unused inputs can simply be deactivated so they don't clutter your daily experience with too many possible inputs. Also, like the 1120, the 3400 can be controlled totally through an IP control protocol. That means advanced system integration is perfectly possible. Yep, LinkedIn is not messing around when it comes to empowering the user to do whatever they want with this amp. The excellent LinkedIn app is a wonderful example of how well it can be done when vendors has a focus on the user experience. The result is a simple, beautiful, powerful app with great prioritization of what you can do in here. But I also find myself loving the slick remote control, where especially the transport controls that works with your streaming apps and Rune comes in very handy. It gives you this relaxed way of stepping through your playlist and playback cues without ever having to stare at screens, which is something most of us do all day in these times. You don't even have to point it towards the amp as it connects automatically with Bluetooth. To me, it simply makes the listening experience feel much more focused, soothing and relaxing. The dynamic display on the unit probably not looking that good uh, right now due to the flickering can be read across the room even in daylight. In contrast with the 1120, everything on the 3400 is basically also accessible via the built-in display. Even the flexible bass treble tone controls with adjustable center frequencies that is in addition to the custom voicings. I think that this is a really smart move as the customers for this kind of super amp probably enjoy the possibilities more when they are accessible like that. And then there's the streaming support. The 3400 simply does it all. It has Bluetooth, AirPlay, Chromecast, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, and Rune. It also does internet radio via the comprehensive VTuner tuning service and UPnP playback of file-based music on your media servers on your network. How it behaves with your streaming apps can easily be set up exactly to your liking as well. And then there's the sound and how it compares with the 1120. In direct comparison, the 3400 do sound more muscular and more importantly, definitely more exciting and cleaner in the overall presentation, suggesting that it fits in its price class. In my comparisons, I used Rune as the source streaming to both amplifiers. And here the 1120 sounds clearly less enthusiastic and a bit dull in direct comparison. The soundstage and air is bigger and the overall sound is very neutral with the room perfect calibrated setup on the Scansonic HD speakers. They appear to be fast and punchy and it feels like there's a tremendous amount of headroom available with the 3400 driving them, even though they are not the most efficient of speakers. On the SBR1s, I honestly find the linked off to be a little boring in the longer run, in direct comparison with some other amps. While there's no doubt that the presentation is 
super correct. It lacks some musical personality and excitement. While 3400 will happily convey the soul of great sources connected to the high-end inputs, it does not add or subtract anything to the equation. And that is to me the biggest strength or flaw, depending on how you look at it, of an otherwise insanely great and perfectly engineered and designed product. In comparison, an integrated amp like the Techniques SUG700 Mark II I had for review at the same time, you can find the review here on the channel, it presents significantly uh, more of that uh, elusive musical insight and depth I think the 3400 lacks, even though it does not neither have the power or features or brain of the Lingdorf, but just sounded more happy to be alive in that particular combination. So musical personality, insight and enthusiastic delivery as a subjective sound experience are not words that easily can be translated into numbers by Linkdorf engineers. I think we need some help here from teacher Barry from the movie Turgle in Trouble to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, Osprey? <laughs> I was studying my grandpa's musical encyclopedia at the weekend and I came across the obscure expression funky. Please. Could you explain, sir? Now listen, kids. Music shouldn't be read or analyzed. Music should be tasted and felt and danced too. There's music in everything, uh, even in Jason's iron pipe. Or Sally's mobile annoyingly ringing in the middle of the lesson. Right, kids, let's grab some instruments and get on down. Doing a quick reality check uh, comparison with the uh, 8,300 euro Marantz PM10 integrated amplifier with the Linkdorf having the advantage of room correction tricks reveals a rather big difference on the Scansonic HD MB5s clearly in favor of the Linkdorf that goes from being upper bassy and leaning back in the mid-range to a significantly uh, more natural presentation and settlement in the room where there is only a subtle difference in tonality on the SBR ones that come across slightly warmer with a fuller bass uh, with the 3400 assisting. The PM10 shows even bigger authority with the most hardcore dynamic presentation and orchestral pieces uh, as well as a noticeably bigger soundstage and even cleaner sound in direct comparison with the 3400. But again, when Room Perfect is really beneficial to the room and speaker, there's no real competition, no matter the obviously stronger sound of the Marantz. And let's not forget, for the price of the PM10, you can almost buy the sophisticated 3400 and a wonderful set of Scansonic speakers. The conclusion must be that Room Perfect should be considered as an obvious reason for always trying it in your own room with your own speakers, as Room Perfect can be just the thing you need depending on the difference it makes in your particular room with the speakers you use. Is there any alternatives to the 3400? Well, if you want to level up from here and go with a preamplifier with the feature set of the 3400, the Linkdorf unfortunately does not make one, but they do make surround processors in the same quality that can easily be used in a stereo system if you're willing to spend more cash. The 10,000 euro MP40 would be an obvious choice for this. And besides giving you the option to build an awesome multi-channel audio setup with decoding up to 12 channels, it also has the options for advanced speaker setups using active bi-amping and multiple subwoofers by using uh, some of the many outputs for crossover uh, and timing duties. That's really smart. So let's wrap it up. TDI 3400 is what I believe to be the most versatile modern integrated amplifier money can buy from a feature standpoint. As well as being the best daily user experience in the market, period, with all of its power being in 
intelligently uh, used and able to be packed into presets. It gives the user access to all its perfections and features once it's set up without ever having to mess around with cumbersome menus. It simply allows you to enjoy and use its amazing sound tuning capabilities on a daily basis and it sets it apart from everything else. It will drive any speaker, it will provide significantly better sound experiences in less than perfect rooms, it will play anything, it will connect to anything, it will stream anything in the highest available quality, and it can all be tuned exactly to your liking. And you will just love to touch that ball bearing volume knob forever and ever. It will also grow on you, no matter what you want to add to your system down the line. The biggest problem is actually that it's so damn perfect that it risks becoming a little boring. It does everything right, but maybe at the expense of not being as engaging in the long run as some other more flawed amplifiers. Again, it's all depending on how much perfect does or does not do for you and your speaker setup in your room. Don't get this wrong, the 3400 is a winner. And it looks like a bargain with all its powerful and practical features and rock solid software, streaming support, overall quality, usability, that insane power and flexibility. As always, be sure to check one out in your room with your speakers before buying and just listen. Any good reseller should allow you to buy and try with full return rights. For any hi fi nerd that loves to experiment a little bit, or somebody that just wants perfection, the 3400 is just a ticket. And I can't do anything else but give it my warmest recommendation in this price class. Now stand by for the review score and remember to gently tap that little like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.